So these are the steps that we're going to take so that we can solve by completing the square. We saw some examples just a little while ago about how we can go about completing the square, how to find the missing pieces and how the factorizations would look. But we need to figure out how do we even get to that point. So the first thing that you're going to do is that you need to collect collect all the variable terms to one side of the equation. Collect all the variable terms to one side of the equation and constants to the other side. And constants to the other side. So step one is really just an exercise in the addition property of equality. What you do to one side, you, you do to the other side. So just like we did in the other examples today, you move like three from one side to the, to the other side. It was no big deal. Once you do that, you need to divide, divide all terms by the coefficient Uh, the coefficient of x squared. Divide all the terms by the coefficient of x squared. I in the examples that we had before, notice that everybody was playing x squared, right? There was not a 2x squared or a 3x squared or negative x squared. They were just regular x squared. We need that so that we can easily complete the square. So that's why we have step two. Divide all the terms by the coefficient of x squared. then we're going to complete the square. And when I say complete the square, what I mean is you add, add the appropriate amount to each side. Add the appropriate amount to each side. Because you can't just add it to one side. That would change the problem. You have to add it to both sides. Once we've done that, you factor as a binomial square. And the fifth step is that we use Use the square root property to finish the problem. Use the square root property to finish the problem. So th these are the steps we're going to take to solve by completing the square. Now, there are a lot of different ways for solving quadratic equations. And we will talk about a strategy so that we do the easiest things first. And there will be certain things that we will be leaving as a last resort, like when nothing else works or it's not easy, then we'll go there. Let's look at this example. You're going to see how we will work through each step of this process. Here's my equation. Now, one of the first things we want to do when we have quadratic equations to solve is to factor, right? That's, what, that's how we learn to solve these guys. But does this guy factor? He already is equal to zero, but does this guy factor? He doesn't factor. So since he doesn't factor, we have to find other ways for solving him. And that's where we're going to use completing the square. Uh, well, here's another issue that we have. Even though I've got a square here, this x is not contained within the square, so can the square root property be used automatically here? No, if you try to do that, you'll see that things don't work out very well, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. So let's follow the steps for completing the square. The first step says get all vari variable terms to one side and constants to the other. How do I do that? Just move the 17. Move the 17 over. Now, be careful with your signs. That's a negative 17, right? So that's step one. 
Step two says divide all terms by the coefficient of x squared. What's the coefficient of x squared? One. So does it matter if I divide by one? No. No. And notice I also left a gap here. I left the gap because of this third step. I need to complete the square, which is adding the correct amount. And we found out what that correct amount was with that neat little song, right? What do we do? Divide by two and squared. Divide what? by two and squared. What? <laughs> no, you got to go to half page. Divide by two and squared. What? Or you don't have to do that. Trust. I. No, we actually sing the song and then you add more. I don't know. We had to perfect the way we said it. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you want to sing it with you. Plus nine. How'd you get plus nine, Kelly? By dividing by two and squaring it. Divided by <laughs> two and square it. Right, now, so I'm just going to put plus nine, right? So uh, this guy's perfect. He's, he's going to be a square when I factor him, right? But if I stop right here, I'm in trouble. Does anybody know why? Could you need to do the three? What? No. Can I just add nine and be OK? Add the appropriate amount of each side. Why do I have to add it to each side? What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if I add 9 on the left, it changes the problem. If I add it to the right side as well, then I still have done a valid operation with my equation, right? But now we get into the whole series of questions about why we do what we do. Why did you want a 9 here? Because I, I needed something to factor, but I wanted to factor very specifically as as a square, right? That's why I picked the 9. And how does this factor? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I mean, factors as x plus 3. We kind of just saw that, right? What about the other side of the equation? It's negative 8. Now, we added the 9 to create a binomial square, right? But why did you want a binomial square in the first place? Because they're awesome. <laughs> nope. I mean, yes, but no. The reason we wanted a binomial square was so that we could do what? What does that last yeah. step yeah. say? Square root Use the square root. Root. So now the square root property is useful, right? Yeah. I can do the square root property. Yeah. I could take the square root of both sides. Remembering what? What is this? plus or minus, so that means x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus How do I break down the 8? 2i Breaks down as 2 times 4 So the 4 comes out as 2, two. The negative gives me i I, and what's left inside the radical? Dose. 2 How do I finish this guy? Move the three. Move the three. Where does the three go? In front of the plus or minus. Goes in front, so it's minus three or negative three, plus or minus two i squared sub two. Now, if I were to separate this guy, would I be able to do any further reducing or simplifying? No, because I have not only an imaginary number, I also have a radical. So even if you were to separate these, there would be no more simplifying left for you to do. In the other examples that I was working with here, and well, here in these other examples, I'm just trying to get you to see if I added 9, it becomes a square. If I add 49 here, it becomes a square. I wasn't solving anything, I was just starting with this expression. And I said, if I had this number here, what would the factorization look like? 